What's going on, Wolfpack Nation? Thank you so much for tuning back in here for part two here of this recording here with the one and only the biggest Pack Knife fan there is, Justin Cook again. So make sure if you haven't checked out part one already yet, as we talked about the NCAA snubs, we talked about last year's uh, you know team, talked about uh, you know the AC championship, all that jazz. So make sure if you haven't checked that out yet, make sure to go and do that first, and then come back here for part two here. So again, th- for part two, we're going to be kind of talking a little bit in terms of uh, the the players that have left uh in terms of that you know put their names in the transfer portal people have gotten in so far talk about some of the high schoolers kind of expectations for next year's team and uh, also to kind of talk about you know hopefully what are some things that we expect to be different for next year's team compared to this year's team so that way next year we first of all get the ac banner up in the raptors which is definitely much much needed and then also to you know hey get another college world series berth because i don't know about you know everybody else but i know that greg Justin and myself were there in Omaha last year, and we are dying to go back again. So it was a blast. Um, so, uh, so yeah, Justin. So I mean, obviously, you know, take kind of looking at you know some of the big names that you know left uh, you know the team this year. Obviously, you know the glaring one in the faces. You know this this top this top, yeah number forty seven guy. Uh, you know it, it's it's one of the things that again i mean and again i, I want to go ahead and say this you know right from the get-go that you know we do not approve whatsoever of any kind of you know negative talk in terms of you know hatred towards again then they these young adults these kids then the day they're just doing what they feel is best for them no matter what this mm-hmm. no matter what reasons t- you know number 47 had uh for making that decision but the one thing which i will say and we kind of talked about this a little bit off air and because now we're just stating facts at the end day, it was very well known that really the two biggest reasons why he supposedly left the state was first of all because he didn't really get a chance to play defense, and then second of all because he wanted to be closer to home. And so now with the fact that he's going to LSU, now you're kind of taking away the excuse of okay, you're trying to get closer to home because LSU is not really closer to home compared to NC State. So now the only other reason that you had said is because you wanted to play defense. Well, from you know. From you know, you, from some reports, I mean, you'll, I mean, you're, it's LSU. So, I mean, like, it's not like it's some team that's like, listen, Tommy, wherever you want to play, we'll play you. It's like, it's LSU. I mean, which is, you know, predominantly a pretty, you know, high ranking yeah. baseball program, you know, a team that's, that's, you know, gone to college world series, one national championships, things like that. So, you know what, I'm, I'm sure that even though he played third base, I mean, you know, that he might not get first base, you know, third base, he might play first base. He might, you know, they might ask him DH. I don't know. Like, again, you know, I, I I really don't know what is at this point. But obviously, too, you can't look around too that there's probably the an NIL factor to it as well. But I mean, that's that's all speculation, you know, again at this time. <laughs> but, you know, Justin, you know, kind of tell me, you know, I would assume more than likely when you found out it really wasn't much of a shock, really, probably would be my guess on it, right? When you heard the news. Hey, one hand and one hand not, I mean. Before he uh, picked LSU, they ended up picking up a second baseman from Baylor. Mm. And going into yesterday, I mean, there was talks where it was like Tennessee and some other small schools and some other Florida schools. Mm -hmm. But And then out of the blue yesterday, there was a thing where it said he visited LSU the night before. So, I mean, it's surprising, but not really at the same time on one hand, because, I mean, they also got a little from a Vanderbilt, one of Vanderbilt's weekend guys, mm-hmm. two in the portal yesterday, so, I mean, I mean, if you want to make it, try to be like what Tennessee and Arkansas were the last couple of years and try to make a deep run and maybe make it Omaha, that's probably a good place to go. True. True. Absolutely. To be honest. Yeah. No, absolutely. Hey. I, I would be curious. This- nope, you go, Greg. Go ahead. No, I I was just gonna say I wonder how much of the um, link Jarrett to FSU may or may not have impacted um, yeah the, the Florida State um, yeah option for him um, because you know you know him you know there's no 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 unknown secret that he's a big yeah. FSU guy um, you know there's pictures of him in his Instagram with with wearing FSU mm-hmm. ball caps and um, but with you know Link Jarrett coming over having seen him. Um, you know, obviously, you know, playing against Notre Dame, I, I, I'm, I'm curious to see if that was even an option for him and that maybe have led him to LSU as well. Um, but again, we'll never know, but it is an interesting 
yeah, yeah. to think well, about. And, and also, too, got to give a quick shout out too, to to Link Jarrett as well. You know, kind of hearing his explanation to the Notre Dame team about how it really came down to it didn't come down to money. It didn't come down to really anything else mm-hmm. besides the fact that his family's his parents and his wife's parents live in Florida, that they don't really have any other family near them. So he wanted to take the job so that way he could be closer to his family. I mean, I think that no Notre Dame fan, no Notre Dame player can fault them for that. I mean, because I mean, no. you could tell yeah. he wasn't, it, it wasn't BS. It was straight up. Like, yeah. I mean, you could just tell in his eyes that, that this mm-hmm. is a hundred percent, the real reason it's, it doesn't come down to money. Yes. It didn't come down to anything else. Cause at the end of the day, you know that, I mean, literally Notre Dame just pulled off, the, one of the biggest, if not the biggest upset in college baseball history and beating Tennessee in a super regional series at Tennessee that was right. in the talks for being possibly the greatest college baseball team of all time. And uh, mm-hmm. so you knew that no matter what money he put on the table, Notre Dame would easily have offered it. I mean, Notre Dame would have played whatever mm-hmm. it takes to keep him around easily, yeah. easily, easily. And uh, they got enough money. Exactly. So, uh, cause I mean, you know, his stock is high right now, probably the highest, you know, oh, yeah. of most any coaches right now. So, mm-hmm. um, so I mean, I, that's why I would say, I mean, great gift for FSU, uh, you know, for sure. But I mean, you know, again, kind of talking a little bit of number 47, you know, uh, obviously I'm glad, I'm sure this probably wasn't necessarily a part of his decision, but I'm glad he made the decision to not go to a division rival. Cause again, I think that LSU, yeah. <laughs> If he would have gone to FSU, it would have been a much bigger slap in the face. It would have been an extra slap in the face yes. to NC State fans for sure. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that he's going to basically choose to go play in a division rival. And also, too, and with the fact that we play a home series against him against FSU next year, that, again, just, just yeah, I can't even wrap my head around that. And I'm glad, I'm yeah, glad I don't would... have to worry about that. Let's put it that way. I'm glad I don't even have yeah. to think about that because you know that there will be some State fans that would just be tearing – him a new one during that entire series and part of me says i mean he at the end day he like he he had to know that that would have been a possibility you like again unfortunately at the end of the day even state fans myself are saying like you know i can't do negativity i'm i'm like you know it's it's in the, yeah. it, when you're in the moment it's a lot, it's a lot yeah. different it's, literally yeah. that dude is literally in the record books of vincent state history forever you know i mean i and i i don't know honestly mm-hmm. if i don't know i mean i hope it gets broken one day just so it doesn't sit at the top but i mean also too because that means that we you know have a guy that's probably taking us to a special season hopefully but you know unfortunately that's that's one of the issues right now is the guy that literally left us after year one to go to a team that basically is offering him defense and probably nil is probably the two reasons at this point uh that he basically left us for that you know so it's but again, it is what it is, oh. and it, at the end day, it's next man up. That's what's got to be. At the end day, you know, everybody says, "How? What are you going to do now?" You know, Avon's like, "No, next man up." Like, you know, we'll find our own guy. And and, and mm-hmm. not even uh, like a day or two after that, we got Carter Trice from uh, Old Dominion, which you know we definitely need to talk a little bit mm-hmm. about because I mean he is a utility guy that can play all over the field. Uh, he's a great hitter. He was a uh, first team All Freshman Team. Uh, uh, his his. his you know, NCAA for all NCAA freshman team is freshman year. Um, so, I mean, he's a great player, great get for sure. Um, and I think that, you know, from some of the rumors and some of the talks, I mean, that there's going to be a couple other guys coming in on top of having a huge freshman class that we already have coming in. So, um, so kind of tell me, Justin, you know, I know that, uh, you know, again, Carter was a great get. Um, and also I know there's mm-hmm. some talks right now. So kind of what are your initial thoughts about, let's talk about Carter first. Um, what are your kind of initial thoughts, you know, getting Carter tries coming in? Um, I think that's a big pickup. The kid is playing in the Cape Cow League right now. He's doing very good over there. Mm-hmm. Um, he's probably going to be, like we said, he's going to be a utility guy, but I think we'll probably see him in the outfield more than anything. Yep. My guess would be probably right field. Okay. But I think it's a yep. big pickup. He can be. Yep. Probably anywhere from two to five in the lineup. Probably just depends on what happens in the rest of the portal and with the freshmen coming in and the guys we got coming back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think it's a big so, pickup for um, just with the defensive issues we had last year yes. to get a guy who can play multiple positions and just put him where where you know we've struggled defensively. Yep. Mm-hmm. So Justin, you say you you say you think he might get gets plugged into the right field. So what are you thinking about souls then you thinking he's getting drafted and going or uh, what, what do you think? Things going to be interesting. I mean, if, if yeah, he comes back, let's say he comes back, I think he'll probably be center field. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. 
and that's well, it. They come back. Well, because one of the things that I think is glaringly obvious that we, I think, I think we missed last year is we didn't really have a lot of speed last year. You know, uh, I mean, no. Monte Brown and JT Jarrett are, you know, are quick, but they're not fast. I, I don't think any, anything in terms of, you know, statistically you'd call him fast. You know, I mean, like JT Jarrett, even as quick as he is, you know, with his button goes, he only had, I think, one stolen base last year. And then Devontae Brown had a couple, but I don't yeah. even think we had anybody that had double digit stolen bases last year. Um, so I mean, that's why we I had mean, some freshmen that had speed. We had freshmen that had speed, but they didn't really get a chance to use it. Okay, right. yeah. So yeah. that's why I'm saying that. I mean, you know, because Noah Souls is definitely not that. So I mean, I mean, because I know predominantly you want a pretty fast player in center field because you know he's usually covering yeah. most of the field. So that's why, you know, and I mean, like, do you still have Dominic Pololi out in left field too? If you, if, if if it's you, mm. yeah. Uh. That's going to be an interesting take to see what happens with that situation between now and the fall. Okay, so we'll just leave it at that? Yeah. All right, we'll leave it at that. All right, cool. Hey, right, uh, FYI, we did have got one with 10 stole, still on bases, Peyton Green, 10 for yeah. 10. Well, yeah. So he was the only one that yeah, had yeah. double digits. Again. You got Will Marcy coming back, too. And mm-hmm. that's another good young bat, too, you got. Yeah. So, I mean, if... I think it's all going to come down like see what happens in the draft that's coming up next month. I mean, if yep. let's say Noah doesn't come back, you got some other young guys coming back and coming in and they're going after in the portal. That Absolutely. Out there. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of names. There's a lot of names. There's a lot that even could do and, and car can do. And especially too, because they are very much well known for being great developers of talent. I mean, you, there's so many examples of developing talent that Avon and, and Hart have done. That I mean, any anybody who's looking to take their games to the next level, they know if they came to NC State that that they would get that. Um, along with too the fact mm-hmm. that if they came here, that you know they're in the process right now of starting the upgrades to the Doak field as well. So you're basically entering a new era of NC State baseball as well. And so to mm-hmm. tell a player that not only can you develop your game and get yourself ready for you know the MLB level and being, you know, the fact that now over the last couple of years we've had multiple people compete in the MLB in terms of, you know, Andrew Kisner, Trey Turner, Carlos Rodon, um, that you can add your name to that list, but also too, on top of it, that you can be the part of a new era in state baseball that, you know, has, you know, that gets a, you know, much nicer uh, stadium that, you know, will be able to recruit a lot bigger guys that, you know, will be able to, you know, year more year after year compete at the top level. It's a win-win for 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 the player in my eyes, but again, that's a little bit of a biased eye, which I'll go ahead and admit right right here and there. <laughs> Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Jessup Insurance Group, that has our whole world covered, with agents in five offices throughout Eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need. Offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. So kind of tell us a little bit, you know, Justin, in terms of, uh, you know, some of these other, like, you know, we have a ton of freshmen coming in. Uh, You know, I know that we have, you know, some other, you know, so I guess we'll just kind of like stick to the guys that we know are coming right now. So, so who are some of the guys that kind of stand out to you uh, right now that are, uh, signed as freshmen uh, coming in this year? Coming in, uh, you got guys like um, Eli Serrano, who's mm-hmm. he's a big talk. He's like six foot five. He can play mm-hmm. all three outf- outfield positions and play some first base. That kid's got some good talent. He's going to get better as his. Th- I think he's just going to be here three years and probably get drafted. He's going to be good. Um, you got a kid that I know a lot of people have talked about was Mike Gupton. Who's mm-hmm. his batting average wasn't that good this year, but the kids got talent speed. He outdid Trey Turner's of forty yard dash time. Wow! And then basically what I heard is this kid's kind of like that Vanderbilt kid that has speed. Okay, he could be like him, and he's got a little bit of Devontae Brown him too a little bit. I like it built wise. I like it now. And then you got and so that's why I thought he was gonna be more of a yeah. center fielder. You know, because when you had mentioned Souls earlier, I th- I thought maybe we might end up yeah, plugging might him, put in him out to be there our too. center fielder it just next year. Depends on like if Noah comes back or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And then sure. I mean, sure. you got a young pitcher in Robert Evans from New York. He's a left hander. He's one of those guys that basically like 
if his defense is doing good behind him, he'll do good on the mound. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, he got. I mean, this whole freshman class that's coming in is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's ranked again. They got seventeen to right now. Yeah. Seventeen. Wow. But, I mean, I pretty. I feel pretty good about getting all these freshmen in on campus this year. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. And because like because uh, one of the things I want to bring up with Eli Suriano is that uh, so last year. He hit 413 in 16 games. He had 413, mm-hmm. uh, won the co-MVP honors at the 2021 uh, uh, World Wood Bat Association U17 tournament. Uh, so uh, he already matched his five doubles from junior year despite 60 fewer plate appearances. Uh, he also has 13 RBIs and 16 runs scored on seven, and while adding seven walks in 16 games. So, again, definitely a, a great guy that can do it all uh, on the offensive and defensive side for sure. Um, but definitely the biggest question I think is pitching. I think that you know next year that that was one that was the glaring issue this year uh, was pitching depth. And, uh, you know, obviously losing Sam Highfill had a lot to do with that. Obviously, any team that loses their ace pitcher, you're going to be struggling. Simple as that, because now you're basically having to cover six or seven innings for a, a weekend series matchup that you didn't you didn't plan to cover beforehand. Um, so, you know, from what I've heard, you know, more than likely uh, is that I mean, you know, that there's not going to be a lot of teams that are going to risk a you know, a, a middle middle round slash, you know, middle round or up pick on uh, Sam Heifel just because there still is a lot of questions with his back, um, you know, which, I mean, you know, is unfortunate. But, I mean, it's kind of one of those things that, you know, if he can get right and, you know, really, you know, have the season that we all expect him to have this, you know, this this upcoming year, during a year, which I think that we need it. That's the thing, guys. I think that heading into next year, obviously with the fact that more likely we're going to lose Chris Villam into the draft, to get Sam Highfield back, uh, okay, just Justin kind of gives me a, uh, so we'll kind of get his thoughts on that. But, <laughs> but I mean, again, it's, it's just it's it's great to have that that building block that we can build around in a Sam Highfield, and then maybe Chris Villeman. I mean, just I mean, mm-hmm. give me your thoughts. I saw mm-hmm. I saw the uh, on it, so you know, tell me. I mean, uh, right now, uh, the guy that's only probably will get drafted is Chris Bilbum. That's like a big make because he's not even in a couple of the. Uh, draft boards like in the top 300 and some of the draft boards interesting for prospect wise interesting and right now he's pitching up in the cape cod league he started two games so far up there and came out of the bullpen one time so i mean from what i'm hearing it depends on how the draft goes we may we may see him back we may not just depends on how the draft goes okay interesting Uh so so what else do you see because go ahead yeah the last uh Draft I heard about, he was like projected like sixth to eighth round. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, that's. So, I mean, it just depends. Yeah. That's still good, but it yeah, just depends good. on what scouts see him as pitching yeah. wise. Right. And here's the other thing to remember, too. He's still got mm-hmm. negotiation, right? So, you know, he has that, you know, he has that flexibility to come back. So, if he doesn't get yeah. what he wants, mm-hmm. you know, because it's. It's it's not all about draft position. It's about mm-hmm. guaranteed right. money, right? Because you know these teams, these major league teams, only have so much money to go around for all of their uh, draft picks. So there's not they're not slotted like the mm-hmm. NFL is. So they just get their pool of money, and um, you know it's not unheard of for like a fourth rounder to sometimes get more money than a second rounder. Um, it just you know it just yep. depends um, what they have available and what and how bad they really yep. want the guy. So um, I think that's going to be the one to watch, and I think I think. Um, Josh Hood will be another one. I think um, he's got potential. I think to potentially yeah. get drafted and, and go um, because he got drafted. I think the year he didn't play, so I think it was like the twenty twenty one draft. Yeah. He didn't play at all, and I, he still got drafted. I think in yeah. like the sixteenth or seventeenth round. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, and and he's yeah. only gotten better. I mean, he had a really good mm-hmm. solid year for us, so he would be mm-hmm. one that I would keep an eye on as well. And don't forget the incoming yeah. freshman. It's potential yeah. they get plucked. Um, there's no guarantees sure. that they come I mean. in. So. We'll have to keep an eye on and those guys. Yeah. As back well. to the pitching part that we were talking about earlier. I mean, you get Sam back probably. Mm-hmm. You get Matt probably back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get Whitaker probably back. You get Lawson back. Carson Kelly. Pay, uh, I mean, there's yeah. like six guys you could probably, and maybe Chris. Okay. So, I mean, that's like six guys right there. Yeah. 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 And, and six star even pitcher. though we did lose. High fill, it's like that gives the younger guys more experience now that yeah. they have going forward. Yep, exactly. 
I was like, the only thing we pretty much need to work on is the bullpen. Yeah, we just need we need more arms. We need more options. You know, we need more trusty options. I mean, we got we got one kid that's pretty much playing in the Coastal Plain League right now for the Wilson Tobs. Okay. His first name's I call him JD because it's easier to say it. But uh, yeah, he's basically they're using him as a closer right now for Wilson. He's been very good throwing some heat right now for them in the closing role. Okay. Well, well, it's good. We need it. We need it. So, so kind of, kind of wrapping this thing up, you know, uh, you know, talking about, um, you know, kind of next year's team. So what are your kind of expectations for next year's team, Justin? Kind of what are some areas that you're looking for hopeful improvement? You know, uh, you know, even specifically, you know, besides just saying like, you know, better pitching and better batting, like, you know, is there specific areas that you're kind of, looking at specifically i think next year you're going to see a lot more stolen bases we need that i think we're going to be a whole lot faster next year with certain guys coming in and back Mm -hmm. defensively yes i know we're losing 47 but i think defensively i think we're going to be a lot better next year i'd hope so yeah i mean peyton green's gonna be i mean we were better way he was gonna be peyton green's gonna be better (laughs) defensively Mm -hmm. i mean he can play short second. He can play anywhere in the infield except first base and catch. Mm-hmm. I mean, you get Will Marcy back. He might be in the infield. Mm-hmm. You get Geno Groover back, who can play mm-hmm. infield and outfield. Mm-hmm. I mean, half of these guys you got back, I mean. And then you got um Gar- another guy who got to stay on the pitcher side. You got Garrett Payne probably back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, half of these guys that you got coming back are pretty good players. Yeah. And then the ones coming in. Absolutely. Then that doesn't include the portal. I mean, right now we got two guys coming in from the portal, and we're still going after some more guys. So, and we didn't really talk about that, but uh, so we already mentioned card tries, but then the second guy, Parker Nolan, uh, who was a transfer in from uh, Davidson, uh, who announced yesterday, correct, Justin, on his Instagram? Yeah, he put he put on his Instagram story like pack nine, uh, something about like see you soon or something like that. Okay, yeah. so. So that's nice. So uh, he played outfield. Am I correct on that? Yeah, he played a center field this year for a Davidson. Okay. Um, so that's another guy who could play center field too. Okay, and he hit he hit three ten this year batting average. Um, he had. Um, I'm looking at. <laughs> I'm looking at this big big spreadsheet. He had uh, 15 home runs. So while you're doing that, so I mean, a a, 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 a great offensive bat, talent, yeah. and an experienced talent too. I mean, he's coming mm-hmm. in as a senior, so he's played you know yeah, four or five years. It's not really baseball. a big risk either. Exactly. I mean, if you look at it, it's not really big risk. I mean, but it's a good problem to have. Exactly. Greg, go ahead. Mm-hmm. What were we gonna add? Uh, while we were naming guys coming back, we didn't mention Jacob mm-hmm, Cozart. Yep. You know, he's going to be, you know, he, you know, he started as a freshman, you know, he's going to probably only get better. Um, so he did a decent job of throwing guys out last he year. He just needs to do a little bit better job. I think yep. receiving the ball. And he was hitting good yeah. down the stretch yeah, too. Just, yeah. And I exactly mean, right. Got, yeah. That I know from that Carolina game yeah. on, um, where he hit the two home runs from that point on the rest of the season, he was, he was probably yep. one of our, so, I mean, hitters. you got good guys coming back and coming in. So I mean, and then like, when we were talking about the transfer, I mean, they had like two guys visit campus around the pitching side. Okay. They've well, already had their visit, so. Nice. Well, we'll see what happens with that situation, but I'm keeping yeah. an eye on that just to see what happens. But I yeah. think I really like what the coaching staff's doing in the portal direction-wise. Good. Love it. Awesome. Well, again, sounds like a lot of exciting stuff. So uh, hopefully this answers kind of answers your questions a little bit, uh, you know, Wolfpack Nation, about – kind of what's to come for this year's team again that it, it we, we we've said this already that that you see this a lot of teams throughout in state athletics right now that it's kind of a mentality of we're not rebuilding we, we're reloading and i think you're kind of seeing that with mm-hmm. pack nine right now you're seeing that with women's basketball with men's basketball with you know football like you know it, it's 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 athletics wide thing right now that you're seeing throughout and out so uh appreciate you justin t- uh joining us my friend and uh you know appreciate you coming on sharing some Pack nine knowledge, and you know, hopefully, again, I mean, obviously, if we can get Noah Souls, Chris Villeman, Sam back, that that's 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 mm-hmm. three big pieces right there that will give us very very hype for next year's season. For either sure. way, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine either way. The way I look yeah. at it, I mean, I coaches agree. are doing a good job right now. I agree. 
And that's that's the last thing to remember too is you know there's going to be a lot to be sorted between now and next spring. We got you know players coming and going. We got fall ball starting right around uh-huh. football season. Um, we'll start yeah. to get a better idea of how it's going to start looking, and I'm sure Justin, you'll be back oh, with yeah, us to let us know because um, I know you're out there for all that fall ball oh, yeah. stuff. So we look forward to yep. hearing how that goes Absolutely. later on the year. Like I said earlier, I think defensively is going to be a lot better. Yeah, that's good. It wouldn't surprise that. me if you see a uh, green at the top of the order next year. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. Wow, that's that's yeah, that'd be big. That's a big statement. Yeah, I like it. All right. Well, thank you all so much again for tuning in. Hope you all enjoyed this episode. And uh, again, make sure if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you are notified on all your devices whenever we release any new NC State content, as well as do our uh, Tuffy Talk live shows as well that you do not want to miss out on. And then also to uh, give this video a like if you don't mind as well. So that way YouTube will put this video in front of more NC State fans. And also to give us a follow Tuffy Talk now on Twitter or Instagram if you haven't already. But uh, also to, again, just go give my man Justin a follow. Again, the biggest NC State Pac-9 fan out there as well so if you want to keep in touch with uh, all things in state baseball hey i'm sure i'm sure uh, justin's a great great source for that no doubt about it uh but thank you all so much for tuning in as always go pack y'all we'll see y'all soon <laughs>